Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're going to be talking about going over the replacement and diagnosis of these brake vacuum pumps on these 5.3 and 6.2 liter GM engines. Now if you have a Chevy a Silverado, a Tahoe, a Suburban, or a GMC Yukon, or a Sierra, or a Cadillac Escalade, these parts and procedures are going to be the exact same from years 2014 through 2018. And there's a couple of uh, symptoms that you can experience when these vacuum pumps go bad. The first one is going to be a hard brake pedal. Um, with this particular truck, brake pedal is good until we use it about three or four times. And then it becomes hard, you know, when you're just braking. You're putting on the brake pedal a couple times. The brake pedal becomes very hard and it becomes very hard to stop. Another issue with these pumps is that since they have pressurized oil going through them, um, they can actually, the, the diaphragm can leak inside of here and you'll get pressurized oil coming into the line. So as well as a hard brake pedal, you'll have oil coming into this line, which is right here. And the first thing I do whenever I get one of these is I take off this, just pull it off. You should hear a little bit of vacuum and you should not see any oil in this tube right here, which this one appears to be dry. If the oil is in this tube right here, you're going to have to replace this brake booster um, and the line that goes to the brake booster. GM does re recommend you do replace that. Now, GM has released a TSB regarding this issue. I'll go ahead and include that TSB in the description if you want to view it to see if your conditions uh, match that of the TSB that GM has released. Now what we're doing here is we're monitoring the amount of vacuum that the pump is putting out, which is about 12.6 at idle. Anywhere from 12 to 13 or 14 is pretty good. It's when you get into the single digits and even the threes or fours at idle, um, these brake boosters are bad. If you shut the vehicle off, you should maintain that amount of vacuum. If your vacuum starts to drop off, you know you have a leak in the system. So what we'll do, so we'll go ahead and start it up and I'm gonna go ahead and push on the brake pedal a couple times it should not go below four and as you can see it's going to about two and three and that's when the vehicle is hard to stop and that brake pedal becomes hard around that three psi now when we let off we should climb immediately back up to our original value at idle which is around 12 to 13 and you can see how long this one is taking um, you should definitely not take that long to get back and build vacuum up so that's a pretty good indication that the vacuum pump is worn one more time I'll just step on the brake pedal a couple times and we're going down to two to three psi and the brake pedal becomes very hard uh, there's even one psi which isn't good um, so there's a good indicator that we have a bad vacuum now that pump. we've properly diagnosed uh, the vacuum pump let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're going to need to get the job done all right, so what we'll need is a 13 millimeter socket. We'll need a couple different size extensions to get to the bolts, 3 8 ratchet, a 3 8 torque wrench, trim removal tool for a little bit of the wiring. Um, if you don't have one of these, some needle nose pliers or a flat blade screwdriver will work as well. And of course, we're gonna need our new vacuum pump. What's nice about this is that GM actually includes a new gasket and new bolts for our pump. It's kind of like an all-in-one kit ready to go. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description of where you can purchase this part online for a better price versus going to the dealer. And the last tool we'll need is this little belt installer, this nifty little tool you can get at any auto parts store. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description um, so you can purchase it online, maybe save some money if you want. We're gonna need this to put the belt back onto the new pump. It makes the job like 100 times easier with this little tool. All right, so here we are underneath the vehicle and with the vacuum pump located right here, um, before we need to remove the bolts that hold the vacuum pump to the motor, we gotta remove some wiring and the belt. Now this is a stretch filt belt, and as you can see, this belt is pretty new. If you have over 50,000 miles on your belt, um, either since you changed it last or if your truck is over 50,000 miles, I really recommend you just cut this off and replace it. But since this is pretty new, we're gonna go ahead and just remove this uh, and reuse it. Now, there are about three or four different locations of these little uh, plastic, um, trim pieces that we need to remove from the motor in order to get this wiring harness down. Um, so there's also a connector right here. This is for the crankshaft position sensor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove uh, this little red piece. We're gonna take a flat blade screwdriver and kind of press down on this red clip. And once we do that, we can depress the connector and remove 
the connector. All right, once that's out of the way, we can take our plastic trim removal tool and remove these little plastic rivets that are holding the wiring to the motor. And once you have the lower two removed, all you need to do is remove the upper two. There's one here on the side of the pump, and there's one up there on a little bracket. All right, so now with our wiring harness kind of loose and hanging down, um, we can go ahead and begin to take off the belt. To do that, just take a 15-16 socket and put it on the crank pulley. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a flat blade screwdriver and while we're turning the crank, we're going to pry off this belt. There we have it. We're just gonna set that aside. Now that the belt's off, the last thing to do is to remove the vacuum line. And this red clip right here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the tangs with both fingers and you're gonna spread them and push them down and that tang and that clip will come off. Now we can go ahead and release the line. Now we are ready to remove all four bolts for the pump. You do have an option of removing the steering shaft, which is right here. Uh, only two bolts hold it in. You have to loosen this bolt right here and kind of wiggle it out of the rack, but I'm not gonna do that. It, it does make the job a little bit easier, but it's not completely necessary. Um, so we're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket to remove two bolts on the back side and two bolts on the front side. Now the last bolt is the front upper bolt and I find that this bolt is a lot easier um, removing it from the engine bay, not the ground. Now all the bolts are loose and all that's left to do is remove the pump. We're gonna have to kinda hold the wiring away while we take the pump away from the motor. There we are. Now that we have uh, both on the bench you can see the old one versus the new one don't be alarmed because the new one looks different than the old one this is a redesigned pump that gm came out with to solve some of the issues that we're having with the original so let's go ahead and throw this bad boy on and get this thing fired up Now that all our bolts are secured, what we're going to do is torque them down to 18 foot-pounds. So now that our new pump's bolted on, it's pretty much time to do everything in reverse procedure. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the belt um, using our belt installer tool. What we're going to do is we're going to put the belt on the pulley um, and about in the 2 o'clock position we're going to install our tool which is going to hold the belt to the pulley.
connection once our belt's on, let's go ahead and remove our tool. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put our wiring back. Just make sure it goes back in the correct holes. If one of your little plastic rivets is broken, not a big deal. If all of them are broken, you probably wanna go get new ones. Make sure that red clip is in the up position. Once you've installed your line, just go ahead and pull on it to make sure that it is, in fact, uh, correctly installed. And then take your little heat shield and put it back around the connector. The manifold is literally right here, about an inch and a half away, so we don't want this connector getting too hot and that seal failing. All right, so now that the new pump is installed and everything is back together, it's pretty much time to start it up and see what we got as far as our pressure values go. So you can see right away we got about 13 PSI, uh, which is pretty good, a lot more than what we had before. We go ahead and rev it up a little bit. It goes to 13.3. Now is a test where we go ahead and push down the brake pedal a couple times, and it's a lot better. It doesn't even go below 10, which is how it should be. So pretty confident we got the concern taken care of. One other thing is that the engine sounds a lot quieter. I'm sure that old pump was making a little bit more noise. So um, that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Make sure to check the links in the description down below for uh, the parts and for the torque specifications. I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe. And thanks as always, guys. See you next time.